గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ వన్ అండ్ ఆల్ వెల్కమ్ టు ద డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ గ్యాస్ట్రెంట్రాలజీ రామయ్య మెమోరియల్ హాస్పిటల్స్ బెంగళూరు సో ఫర్ లాంగ్వేజ్ ఆఫ్ లీనియర్ ఎండోస్కోపిక్ అల్ట్రాసౌండ్ సో ద అవుట్లైన్ ఈస్ లైక్ స్కోప్ ఆఫ్ యూఎస్ వాట్ ఆర్ ఆల్ ద డిఫరెంట్ ప్రోప్స్ దట్ ఆర్ యూ గోయింగ్ టు యూస్ అండ్ ద ప్రిడామినెంట్లీ వాట్ ఈస్ ద మీడియా స్టెన్ విండో దట్ వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు సీ ఆన్ ద యూఎస్ as we all know endoscopic ultrasound has got two processes to uh, monitors one for the endoscopic one for the ultrasonic so both the processes and monitors should be in good position so like uh, that will be at the head end of the patient and should like the right end of the endoscope should be free for uh, uh, managing both uh, the knobs of the uh, endoscope as well as for the uh, monitors so when we say about a linear echo endoscope so it has got a convex array at the tip of the endoscope like uh, it gives you the picture similar to an ultrasonic picture so when we use when we use a term radial echo endoscope so it is basically a sector based picture that we are going to see and it will give a picture similar to the computer tomography the advantage of linear echo endoscope is it has got a curved transducer so which gives a 120 degree field of vision the bap support is around 2 to 3.8 mm like uh, predominantly in pentads we use uh, 3870 utk which has got a 1 mm larger uh, therapeutic channel than compared to the uh, olympus one 3270 utk has is a slim uh, scope so which has got a smaller um, uh, channel which is predominantly used for uh, fine needle aspiration biopsy only where are we going to use uh, or what are the indications of endoscopic ultrasound one is for cancer staging second one is for lymph node status like predominantly the regional lymph node like uh, periluminal or perigastric so we are able to target by doing an endoscopic ultrasound pancreas de- pancreatic uh, disease evaluation as well as for evaluation of the subepithelial lesions pre procedure intra procedure and post procedure in the pre procedure we always should see whether the pre procedure prophylactic antibiotics are given or not because whenever we are doing a transluminal fine needle aspiration especially in a cystic lesion so there can be a chance of cyst getting uh, infected as well so we should always look at the prophylactic antibiotics which are uh, uh, given or not so what is the guidelines for a fine needle aspiration that also we should see so the inr should be less than 1.5 the platelet count should be more than 50000 predominantly in a diagnostic uh, evaluation we tend to use either a 22 gauze or a 25 gauze um, uh, needle and always like uh, the dictum now is lesser number of passes into the target lesion such that we are going to get an adequate tissue and then specimen evaluation by the, either on site pathologist or in the pathology room whenever we want to look at the staging perspective we tend to use either a cct or an mri or a pet ct because they are going to stage better but what is the scope of endoscopic ultrasound it is much better in local regional staging which is going to stage around 85% of the scenario whenever there is a prior radiation that has been used us fails to determine what is the t stage of a tumor because uh, radiation will make the layers of the wall uh, little confluent and we will not be able to delineate the respective uh, layers like mucosa submucosa muscularis propria or the serosa or the adventitia whenever we term it as a malignant node so there should be it should be echo poor it should be round it should be around a centimeter in size and there should be a distinct margins or a smooth border and it should uh, lose its normal uh, cortex medullary configuration of a benign node so this is what is called a malignant node so it should be echo poor that it should be darker than the surrounding second one is it should be round it should be well defined borders the size or the diameter of the node should be a more than a centimeter the normal configuration of cortex and medulla of a normal node should be destroyed so then we say that it is a malignant node so whenever we are doing a fine needle aspiration of a node we should always avoid the primary tumor in the needle path otherwise we may upstage the tumor that is what it is so the in the linear us the learning curve with is little longer it is difficult and it takes time so the problem is like we should be strong in anatomy but uh, once we is, once we um, are good with the anatomy like we can easily do uh, easily do a linear echo endoscope systematic approach system based um, uh, local regional anatomy so it's always better and it it looks or as, as well as training will become more easier you should choose the easiest one and uh, you can keep doing keep improvising keep reading keep seeing more videos and you can you can become your own uh, expert of linear echo endoscope 
what are the different factors that can affect endoscopic uh, ultrasound one is what is the urgency of endoscopic ultrasound we should not be jumping and putting an EU scope because the transducer at the tip is around a centimeter so we can always do a regular uh, diagnostic upper GI scope that is going to tell you the anatomy or the road map and then uh, we can always uh, determine up to where is the safe limit of pushing the EU scope so if at all there is any difficulty in passing the echo endoscope so always don't push the scope because you are going with the ultrasound vision so other uh, imaging evidence can also act like a road map like CT evidence of a lesion periluminal around 5 centimeters we can always corroborate it with your endoscopic uh, findings what are the relations on the CT so that will aid you in identifying which needle where needle what is the needle path so it will it is always better to have a road map for the beginner once you become like cross 100 US FNAs then you can have uh, directly US and then uh, try to determine what is the lesion once you are through with your uh, learning Curve. Drug allergies we should always keep in mind, always take an informed consent because if at all uh, there is any bleed or uh, uh, any perforation so we should always uh, like the consenting should be more important. So comorbidities we should always keep in mind like what are the drugs that the patient is on like uh, is, does he have any comorbidities like cardiopulmonary, respiratory because the scope is little bi uh, bigger in size. So does he have any liver disease or hematological uh, disease, any bleeding di diathesis or a person has got a surgically altered uh, anatomy where we are pushing the scope in. So all this should be kept in mind before we introduce our linear uh, echo endoscope. What are the different drugs that the patient is on? Does he, uh, is he on a beta blocker, anti-epileptics, anti-thrombotics, warfarin, antiplatelets, hypoglycemic drugs? These are all the things that we should always uh, having a checklist before uh, you pass your echo endoscope because patient comes first, safety comes first and after that the scope comes first. The difference between the regular endoscope as well as um, uh, duodenoscope is it has got a tougher insertion tube and a longer bending section. So like uh, the bending section of a EU scope is little more longer. So sometimes we may find a little difficulty in uh, introducing the echo endoscope. There is no again trick. We can always push the scope till the posterior pharyngeal wall. Use the big wheel down and then you try to uh, uh, try to intubate little blindly. So always use a caution at stenotic areas predominantly during the intubation area as well as in the duodenal bulb and in the rectosigmoid area. So we always talk uh, linear echo endoscope based on the sectors. So always the left hand of the endoscope should be used for talking as well as the right hand is predominantly for the microprocessor or the processor or for the knobs. So the movement should be micro movements like uh, people tend to tell that whenever you are doing an EUS it is almost like dancing with your wife. The movement should be slow and gentle otherwise we tend to miss stru structures and we tend to do the same imaging again and again. We should scan slowly and continuously and we should not be missing the landmarks like different people will keep the head end differently some people will keep the head end left like uh, predominantly people trained in Europe like they tend to keep the head end left like that is the patient lying uh, with the head end left. Uh, people trained in US and uh, Japan like uh, they keep the head end that side it is just a mirror image with just a flip of a button we can always rotate the image and then uh, we can look at the landmarks in a different. As a protocol we tend to follow the tubular structures, cystic structures or the vascular structure because uh, they are the ones that are going to give us the anatomy much better. So like we generally follow those and then uh, take it from there. The ultrasound probe in a linear echo endoscope is convex on one side so always the torquing is the most important trick. So whenever we torque like we need to see the numbers on the scope whether they are moving normally or not. If the numbers are not moving that is the torque is not happening. Lot of people tend to use the hand torque movement. The hand torque movement is very limited, so we should always use the left hand for talking because that movement is much more much much more than the hand torque. So we should always talk so much that we always turn the back towards the patient. So there are different people will tell different home stations. We can choose a vascular as a home station or a or a structure as a home station, like uh, liver you can keep it as a home base or iota you can keep it as a home base like uh, or pancreas you can keep it as a home base and from pancreas we tend to see different structures like portal vein, inferior vena cava, portal confluence, splenic artery, splenic vein, left adrenal, left kidney and then you can look at the spleen so like if you pull back and then you torque again you may find a celiac as well as a supremocentric artery and a supremocentric vein so different stations you can use uh, uh, you can use uh, 
uh, different movement depending upon whether you are looking at a ventral structures or a dorsal structures we are seeking in front of the esophagus stomach or we are seeing posterior to the esophagus in the stomach ventral structures in the mediastinum predominantly we look at the trachea bronchus all the chambers of the heart the pulmonary artery the aorta like uh, because the uh, left atrium is a large pulsatile ecopore structure which is very adjacent to the esophagus and we can see the pulsatility on the esophagus so that we can keep it as a home base on the ventral structures whereas the dorsal structures that is a posterior to the esophagus we find a descending aorta the spine azygo vein and the thoracic duct so whenever we are looking at the dorsal part of the um, uh, mediastinum predominantly we tend to keep aorta as a home base it is easy to look at ventral to dorsal whenever we torque 180 degrees we tend to get uh, ventral to dorsal or we started with dorsal then we tend to come to the ventral so we need to understand like what is the where is a transducer like uh, we should always uh, remember like uh, what is where is the tip of the transducer in one frame we may not be able to capture um, all the structures so we need to remember that it is a linear us scope so the the ultrasound probe is parallel to the beam it is useful for the therapy because whenever we are passing a fine needle uh, aspiration needle or a biopsy needle it is going to come uh, uh, it is going to come uh, in the field of vision so always we should ensure that the tip of needle we are able to see and it is not useful for a screening uh, method because a meticulous meticulous examination is going to take lot of time so majority of the time it is only useful for it is used useful for taking uh, tissue from there so important is basically it gives a narrow field of view at each point we need to identify vascular structure you follow it to its origin and then reconstruct the anatomy like some people use balloon or no balloon basically it is for maintaining the transducer in the center whenever we are using linear us scope for the mediastinum so like withdrawal has got a good control on the good control on the us like we we start distally like uh, from the ge junction and then slowly pull back up by torquing 180 degrees like ventral to dorsal or dorsal to ventral so we always insert the endoscopy endoscopy or us scope under endoscopic vision with air um, air pump on blind insertion into the esophagus and gradually we advance the scope into the stomach so once you advance up to the ge junction we can put the Uh, put the air pump off and then we can do the scanning from the liver so like we can we can start from the duodenum as well like we can put the air pump up and then go up to the pylorus into the duodenal sweep and then from the duodenum you can look at the structures and then um, uh, we can we can uh, pull back as well the most important thing for mediastinum is we see where is a cranial end in the us monitor so we start examination of the distal esophagus Aorta is seen as a linear ecopore or anechoic structure once you put a doppler then you see that uh, a significant flow is there so once we rotate 180 degrees clockwise and counter clockwise we withdraw a centimeter or a 2 centimeter we tend to see the liver and then take it from there so like we see all the structures by rotating we see pleural reflections we see uh, we see artifacts like which are bright artifacts which is by from the aorta or from the pleural reflection air is always an enemy for the echo sonographer so like we should always put off the pump when you are doing the us examination two windows are most important one is a subcranial window sub and the aorta pulmonary window in the distal esophagus always tend to see the left lobe of the liver so right lobe of the liver you tend to see from the uh, from the duodenum d1 so you see the left lobe of the liver once you pull back then you tend to see the left hepatic vein joining the inferior vena cava you pull back a little then you see the ivc entering into the right atrium so it is it is good good investigative modality for ruling out butcheri syndrome as well then you pull pull and tot like you get to see the left atrium mitral wall and the left ventricle as well as you tend to see the pulmonary artery and then the right ventricle so left atrium mitral wall and pulmonary veins like uh, above the left atrium is the right pulmonary artery so between the right pulmonary artery and the carina is the subcranial space so we tend to see the trachea as a river baiting uh, artifacts because uh, trachea is covered by c shaped cartilages so that will give rise to what are called as reverberation artifacts <coughs> right bronchus is long and angulated and moves farther away from the esophagus whereas the left bronchus is smaller and nearer to the esophagus there are tracheal reverberation artifacts because of the c shaped cartilages on the trachea as well as from the aorta like the posterior wall of uh, aorta will show a bright artifacts 
So like one on top of other left atrium will be there on top of it pulmonary artery and on top of it the aorta. So between aorta and the left branch of pulmonary trunk, so we have the aorta pulmonary window. Usually aorta pulmonary window is an empty space. If at all AP window has got a node, we can target it by doing from the esophagus by using US fine needle aspiration. Subcranial window is between uh, like uh, below the carina that is where uh, the uh, the trachea bifurcates into right and left bronchus below that the right pulmonary artery and left atrium are there so like uh, like we look we subcranial space has got a lymph node so like uh, usually it will be benign reactive lymph node so if at all it is looking malignant we can always take a uh, biopsy from the esophagus so these are all the different stations, the mediastinal anatomy for um, uh, US, like of all the structures, mediastinal anatomy is much more easier uh, to learn. But most important thing for uh, US is for pancreatic evaluation. That will be the chapter two on the language of uh, linear US.